Hi, Carol. So I'm finally getting to your video. Thank you so much for waiting because it's been super busy and I like to take my time and do a good job. Uh, so you're right. He is a little bit on the heavy side right now. Rockies and Missouri Fox Trotters are usually very easy keepers. Uh, so it is best to feed them low sugar hay, like a grass hay, uh, a teft hay. But you, you want to keep an eye on the sugar content if you can get it analyzed. And then I wouldn't give any extra supplements or anything like that. They can be insulin resistant because they are easy keepers and then they get extra weight on them and then they start having issues. So I would try to get him to drop weight. I'd start running him in your round pen for 10 to 20 minutes. I would lunge him over poles, really make him work and move his feet. Because uh, otherwise, if you just do it diet wise, you might not be able to get the weight off. All right, so I know you said he doesn't bend to the right very well. The way the bozels work, they do put pressure on the other side of the face, but it's not the same as with a bit. And I, if a horse has a problem turning, the best bits to use are something like a full cheek snaffle. And I'll and I'll send you a link for that because it has bars on the side. So when you pull on the right rein to turn them, uh, what'll happen is on the other side of his face, those bars will push on him and help him to turn. So that's the first thing I would do is not use this bozel anymore. And I would go to a snaffle bit. I also saw that in the last video, he was in a wonder bit. And if that works to turn him, I would do I would do that instead. With the wonder bit, you can hook it just to the top ring if you wanna use it as a snaffle, but if he's not turning well, then I would hook it down on the shank area. And he seemed quite comfortable in it. So otherwise, as you come in the arena, I would work him in circles around the poles to start, like a figure eight. And every time you pull with that right rein, instead of pulling out, to the side, I would pull it back towards your hip, okay? Now, I'm talking about riding with the snaffle, not the bozel. So again, I would change the bit and then I would pull your right hand back towards your right hip and I would hold my right heel into his side to get him to bend better because he does need more of a bend. He's kind of turning and then he's just going straight. So you want to teach him to arc his body like a C so he can carry you better around the turns. And I would come in and I would make, let me see if I can stop this. I would, I would make a circle around this pole. And when you start riding, I would immediately go to the right. So I would circle three times to the right around this pole. And then I would come here and I would go around the pole right here. And I would go once around it to the left. And if he was bending well to the left, then I would go back to the right three times and then back to the left once. And I would repeat that probably five times, okay? Every time you pull on that right rein, you wanna dig with that right heel to get him to arc his body. And then in time, when you make turns, he'll understand how to hold his body like that. But right now you have to help him. If he's lazy, then as you're turning here, you might have to wear a spur if he's leaning on your leg. And then once the spur is on, you just turn your toe out and hold that spur into their side. Uh, everybody's afraid of spurs, but there's dull spurs and I can send you a link, but you don't want the horse leaning into you and you don't wanna have to bump it all the time. So you're trying to teach him not to lean in. So it would be right rein towards your hip and then dig your right heel into the side. If he's holding the bend, you release. If he's not, you hold that into him. But what I do is I go around those circles is I pull on the right rein, and every time I pull on the rein, it's going back towards the hip, and I dig with the leg at the same time. So it's right rein and right leg at this very same time, and then it would be left rein and left leg. The other thing is you're looking down a fair amount and where you look really helps the horse understand where they're supposed to go. So even if he doesn't turn, you still wanna keep looking the direction you're going. 
Now, if you like, I am looking the direction I'm going, then you're looking down too much at the dirt ahead. So I want you to try as you're making your turns to stare at the trees instead. So as you make this turn, I would be looking at that tree. Then as you're turning, I would be looking at this tree. Okay. Then I would be looking over this direction. Okay. And then as you're going to turn left, I would be looking this way. So you want to look up more because as you're making the turns, you're kind of falling forward. So it's not helping him at all. Okay. So this is one where he's not turning at all. But see how you're looking down? And this is the hard part. When they're not turning, everybody looks at their head or where the horse is going instead of looking where they still want to go. So you want to make sure, even if he won't turn to the right, that you're looking off in that direction as you do it. But again, I think changing out of this, I would not use this or a side pull. At this point in time, I would go to a snaffle bit. And the ones he can bend and go really well, then yes, of course you can chain it, change it. But with a young horse, you need to have clear cues as much as you can. And I think he's just, part of it's his confusion. So the other thing I would do, do besides the bit, looking where you're going, looking up and kind of leaning back a little bit to make you more balanced, is to carry a stick over on this side. And it doesn't have to be like a dressage whip. It can be a shorter whip, but it needs to be at least two feet long, okay? As you're turning and you're looking this way, what you're gonna do with the whip, the whip is usually carried down like this. So what you're gonna do with your hand is as you go to make that turn, you're gonna turn your wrist and hand so that stick kind of comes up towards his head. So the stick will kind of be like that, but coming from your hand. And as you're looking to the right, with your left hand, you're going to wave this towards his face, okay? What that's going to make him do is go away from the stick and help you to turn your horse, okay? Now, if that doesn't work, you're like, I'm waving and he's still not going, then that means you need to hit him, okay? And we're not going to hit him in the face. I just want you to hit him on the neck here. Hit him repeatedly, and each time you go to hit him, if he's not turning, hit him harder, okay? Because he needs to understand, and if he's not turning, then he's not getting the message, and you need to increase the pressure. So as you're pulling on that right rein back towards your right hip, and you're looking towards the trees over here, you're going to use this hand to hold the whip, wave the stick towards his head. If that doesn't work, you're going to start hitting him in the neck, hit him harder and harder until he turns. And then the other thing you want to do is don't worry about bending him when this is happening. So just take your right leg off in case he's confused because he's a young horse. And with your left leg, keep it right at the girth, kind of right by his shoulders, and you're going to dig it into him. If that doesn't work, you can kind of bump him with it. But if you have a spur on, you're just going to dig it into him, hold that into him, wave your stick here, then hit him in the neck if he doesn't turn. And then once he turns, he turns one step this way, you stop and you go, oh my God, you're such a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. You can give him a little treat. You can give him a little scratch and then you continue your turn, okay? So again, we want to work him a lot to the right. To the left, he looks pretty good, but to the right, you need to work him two to three times as more. So again, every circle, every turn, every pattern that you make, you want to do it three times to the right and once to the left if he's good, okay? Let me go to the next page. Okay, so here you're just making turns going back and forth. What I would do is instead of just turning into the fence, I would do it at a standstill, which is a turn on the forehand, which means I would make a complete stop and then I would turn him because you want to make sure he really knows how to disengage his hindquarters because what he's doing on these turns is he's moving his front end and it's his back end. So he's not really clear which end do you want me to move. So he's doing both of it. So here goes his back end, now his front end, okay? So he's kind of doing a turn on the forehand and haunches at the same time. So I would want to separate those, especially with the young horse, and make it clear. When I dig with my leg, it means move your hind quarter over, okay? So what I would do is as you're going, I would sit back, keep your eyes up, I would stop, and then once you stop, you look towards the road, you pull a little bit on that right rein, and you use your right leg 
to push him over. As you're halfway, when you're facing this pole, you hold with both reins, keep digging with your leg because that will keep his front end from moving, okay? If he won't move over, again, use a spur instead. And if that's still not working or you don't want to spur, you carry a stick, but now you need a longer stick, okay? Because it's got to go behind your leg and you have to be able to keep your hands on the reins at the same time. So a dressage whip, something that's three feet long, usually works the best. As you're turning, so again, it's right rein, it's going to be right leg, you're going to be looking this way and then looking this way. As you're turning him, when you dig with that leg, if he doesn't turn, what you're going to do with your stick, it's in your hand, I'm trying to imitate it, it's in your hand on the right side, you're going to tap, tap, tap and keep hitting him and each time hit him harder, okay? Especially if he's lazy, it's not going to hurt him, you can hit yourself with a whip, it really doesn't hurt very much at all but you're trying to make motion and increase the pressure until he turns. If you do that correctly in a week, he's going to be moving his hindquarters really well. So you want to hit him turn as you're turning, lean back a little bit, keep your eye up, hold both reins so he doesn't walk off and keep hitting him. And then once he's turned all the way around and he's facing this way, and he's at a stop and did it well, same thing. Make a big fuss, give him a cookie, scratch him, tell him he's the best horse ever so he understands that was the right thing. And then walk, stop, do it the other direction, okay? If you continue to do it this way, again, he's not going to be clear. And on all your turns, you kind of look down too much, so you're not helping him. And if you're letting him move his hindquarter and his front end together in the beginning when they're learning things like this they don't understand the difference so you got to be very clear with your legs breaking it down where your leg is so they understand when to move their hindquarter and when to move their front end okay and as you do it as you do the turn you do want to bring that leg back just to say about two inches behind the girth so he knows that's to move his hindquarter so then when you go to move his front end or say like when he's not turning and you're trying to go to the right, you keep that left leg right. right there. And then when he's not turning, when you're turning to the right, okay, that's when you would dig with them. But when you're trying to turn their hindquarter, you want your leg back here. So, so you're doing a turn on the forehand leg back here. You're doing a turn on the haunches, which means you're pushing their front end over. You'd have your leg right where it is, okay? So for now, I would not practice the turns the way that you're doing. I would make it clear cut that you want to do a turn on the forehand. And I have that written out and also have that in videos that I can send to you. Okay. So here, as you were turning to the right, well, he's falling in both directions. And the other thing, because again, I saw the other video, he's not walking as well. He's starting to get a little bit pacey probably because he's being so lazy, okay? So the things that are going wrong here, you're looking down as you're turning, you're leaning forward as you're turning. So you need to keep your eyes up and you need to lean back and you need more of that left leg when you're turning to the right because you're trying to block the opposite direction so he understands. So let me see which way you go now. So if you're turning to the right, use your right rein, left leg, lean back, you'd wave your stick, you'd be hitting them a lot more with that leg, okay? So again, until he turns, don't worry about the bending part with the right leg, because again, he's a baby, so he's probably totally confused, and a lot of people don't teach them to bend when they sell these horses. So every time you turn to the right, and he's not turning, use your right rein, take your right leg off, and use your left leg. So right now, right rein, left leg, lean back, look up, wave the stick at his neck, keep bumping him with the leg, keep leaning back, keep looking over here, okay? He, I don't think he's being bad, I think he's totally confused, okay? And with the bit, you're gonna be able to keep a little bit more contact because as these horses get lazy, the other thing they do besides getting pacey, if they can pace, because they're like, why bother doing anything? She's let me pace. This is much easier. They get trippy and you don't want them to get trippy. Okay. So you want to make sure you're giving them clear cues 
you're helping him to understand and then that we're not going to mess up his gates at all because it looked like he it looked like he could gate pretty well so here as you're trying to turn him again the hard part are these bozels are made for the rain to go against his neck like neck raining so as you're bopping to the right he, it doesn't give the signal like the bit does. So he's just getting confused and really doesn't know what to do. And that's part of the biggest problem. So if we change all these things, I bet you in a week or two, he's going to be much, much better. Okay, so I think this is a video when you were probably trying him. So as you watch him walk, see how his legs are much more separated? And he's in a better frame than when you have them in those other videos so his legs are separated he's in a frame and he looks like he's using himself a lot more and then of course he's a lighter weight so and there he is a pretty nice gait so he looks like he's got good genetics you know that he's going to gait well he was bred well it's just getting him back to this situation and when you turn to the right here you're still looking down so you want to look up lean back but he goes much better in that bit than the bozel you were in so again i would not go to that bozel until he's completely finished in the bridal and teach him how to neck rein and then you could do it okay and i would try to get his weight back to this this is much safer the other thing you'll notice about this horse is he comes down in his pasterns a fair amount uh, they're breeding a lot of them because I evaluate so many that I see a lot of horses coming down much more in their pasterns and you don't want him to have any issues as he gets older. So extra weight is going to put more weight on those pasterns, okay? And the pasterns are down in the ankle area, okay? So he's a little bit long in the pastern. It makes for a more comfortable ride, but you don't want them to have any suspensory problems as they get older. So try to get his weight back down to this. Okay, so here you are going the other direction. It's just a slow walk. Let's see if you do anything else. But there you can see his past turns a little bit more. See how he comes down in the back as you made that turn? You can see his feathers coming almost down towards the ground. So again, we want to help those. We don't want to hurt those. So we want to get the weight off. And then the other thing you'll see is as he's going, you'll see how much, oh, I got too close. The dirt is moving in front of him. So that usually means they're dragging their feet some. And that can make for a trippy horse. So a horse that's dragging its feet, it's lazy, and it's pacey can get very trippy very easily. So I would be walking this horse over poles. I would be making him more energetic. And you don't want to lean forward at all because if they trip, we can knock them off their feet. So with him, it's going to be much better if you sit back more or sit back in a chair seat a little bit. And you're really going to have to concentrate as you're riding to keep your eyes up. A lot of people have that habit. We look down at their head or we look at the dirt right here. You want to keep looking up, sitting back. Keep your shoulders, you know, usually I say keep it over your hip. But with you, I would keep it back a little bit more just because he's a little bit on the lazy side. And if he does trip, we want your weight way back, okay? So... I think it's a very nice horse. I think he has talent, but I think you're going to have to use either possibly spurs and a stick to help you in the beginning. I would change the bit. I'm going to send you all that stuff and then give you some more uh, written information for you to do. And then you let me know if you have questions.